Hi, everyone. Okay, so today's the day that many of you are taking the SAT. So I told you that I would film this lecture. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, and then I'll upload it to YouTube. So let me share my screen. And we're doing human growth and development. So that's basically birth to death. So it's going to take us a while to get through uh, some of the stuff. So don't uh, go crazy. So oh, let me back up. Went a little too far. <laughs> there we go. That's much better. So the, the first part is going to be a little easier because you've actually lived through it. Uh, once we get past adolescence, you haven't lived that yet, so that might take a little more studying. Uh, but for the most part, the, this first stuff is stuff you, you may already know. So let's start with the beginning. You, you know that we have a sperm and an egg uh, meet to develop a, a zygote. Uh, females are XX. Males are XY. And men can produce sperm uh, into their 90s and can father a child way into their 90s. Women are born with the number of eggs they're going to have. So as they mature, so do the eggs. Uh, so we will hear of uh, possible problems uh, with women. Uh, getting pregnant late in life, uh, 50s or even early 60s, because remember the, the eggs are also that old. So there might be some uh, defects genetically. So in humans, uh, it's nine months to, uh, split into three uh sections of three months so trimesters the original as we said is the zygote um, and that's the sperm and the egg that has uh, been fertilized of course by the sperm the egg and then we move from the embryo phase to the embryo phase it's two weeks to eight weeks after conception and then we move to the fetus stage and that's from eight weeks until birth. And um, once we hit the fetus stage, that's the terminology that's used for the entire rest of the pregnancy. There was some research done on the ability of uh, in utero uh, communication in the extent that the, the developing fetus doesn't understand language yet. Because for every child born tonight, whatever language they're gonna learn is a foreign language to them. They don't have any of that, but they are kind of hotwired for language. That's what Norm Chomsky tells us, that it's much easier to learn a language when we're younger because our brains are like a sponge. They just want to take that information in. The problem is in many schools and school, school districts, when do they do most of their uh, education on language is in high school, which is not really the best time to do it. It should be younger, but that's how the system is set up. So back to this study, what they did was read rhyming stories. And they did use a lot of the Dr. Seuss ones, but there are other writing stories out there. And what they did was read while the mother was, you know, in a relaxed position uh, to the developing fetus. So, you know, it could be cat and hat. It could be like one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. And if you think of what's going on here, it's not that the developing fetus actually heard the words of the story, but it heard the pattern. So 
One fish, two fish, three fish, blue fish, old fish, new fish, black fish, blue fish. So it recognized that rhythm. When the fetus was born, if the baby was upset or cranky, they would read that story. And it was as the baby would recall hearing that pattern of words and therefore calm down and relax. Remember, the womb was that nice, safe place now the baby has a lot of stimuli, can get agitated very easy, could get colicky. But the research actually sh shows not only like rhyming books, but music. And it, it doesn't matter what type of music. It could be salsa, it could be hip hop, it, it could be Beethoven, it could be rock. It wasn't a matter of what type of music. It was that the music that was played when the baby was calm in utero, um, now that the baby is experiencing maybe some issues or upset out in the real world, that that music can calm them down. Now, these are called teratogens. Teratogens are anything that could possibly affect the development of the zygote embryo fetus. And there are some things that are going to be more sensitive to developing uh, zygote embryo or fetus, depending on when they're exposed. For intraday psychology, you don't have to know all those different time periods. You just have to recognize and know what the different teratogens are, you know. So uh, an example here would be chickenpox or rubella, which is German measles, uh, HIV, or even Zika, the Zika virus. You know, uh, people were coming down with that and we were having uh, babies that had misformed arms or their lungs weren't completely developed, et cetera. So maternal illness can affect the developing zygote embryo fetus. Alcohol and drugs. You know, if alcohol and drugs can affect adults, remember everything that mom consumes when she's pregnant, the developing fetus is also consuming whether it's good stuff or bad stuff in this case drugs would be the bad stuff because it can have some major uh, issues with the development uh, we have fetal alcohol syndrome where children are born uh, with very high foreheads and tend to have uh, many developmental delays heroin and cocaine, uh, babies can become addicted uh, in, in the womb and go through literally withdrawals. Now, an adult, the withdrawal is bad enough, the shaking, the craving, the headaches, the, the stomach issues, the, 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 the pain. Imagine a developing baby who's just a couple pounds going through those same withdrawals. It could be to the point to even kill them. Caffeine and smoking and vaping. Caffeine, you think we, we drink caffeine every day, right? Uh, if you have a cup of coffee, if you have a hot chocolate, because chocolate has caffeine in it. You know, you can get caffeinated gum, et cetera. But caffeine is a stimulant. It's a legal stimulant, but it's still a stimulant. So therefore, it can have effects on the developing uh, fetus. And same with smoking, nicotine. You know, the mom, if she's smoking, uh, can cause developmental delays. It can actually cause SIDS, 
which is sudden infant death syndrome, where uh, babies who have been born within the first year might possibly not survive. They just wake up one morning and there's no baby anymore. The, the baby has lost its life and there really isn't any exact cause but that's one of the suspects is uh, smoking. And not only smoking by the mom, mom breathing in secondhand smoke also has a pretty high correlation to SIDS. Just think how horrible that would be as a, as a mom that you're, you put your baby to bed one night and the next morning your baby's dead. All for that cigarette that people had. Or vaping. We know there's the, the so many toxic chemicals in vaping. It's actually worse than smoking. But both are bad because whatever mom takes into her body, so is the developing fetus. Diet and pollution. Diet and pollution are a problem. Uh, because not everyone is eating healthy anymore, especially young people. We do see a lot of young people uh, getting pregnant. They may not even know they're pregnant for a while, but they're not necessarily eating folic acid uh, before they get pregnant because they want to make sure that their brain and the spinal cord are properly developed. That's one of the things that is necessary but if they're eating junk food or not eating properly they may not realize but they can be affecting that developing you know fetus pollution you know it's better here in pittsburgh than it used to be but it used to be pretty pretty bad we dumped a lot of garbage in our rivers and nobody thought anything of it now we realize that some of that stuff we dumped in our rivers has settled to the bottom and is actually, you know, easily brought up by what we call bottom feeders. These are fish that get their foods from the bottom of the, the river or the, or the lake or an ocean, except that's also where all that sediment, all the, the chemicals would land too. And so we're not talking just like cheap fish, we're talking fish like grouper or, grouper or tuna that are, are bottom feeders and they can consume things like mercury. Mercury doesn't dissolve out of your body. It remains. Therefore, the more and more and more and more that gets consumed and entered into your body, the more and more possibility of some side effects. Well, that's fine if you're an adult and you weigh, you know, 120 to 200 pounds somewhere, you know, in there, that's fine if you're an adult. But the developing fetus, you know, in the womb is a pound, two pounds, three pounds, four pounds. Any little bit of mercury has the potential to cause a problem. So that's why we have it here as a teratogen. And when I teach my human growth and development classes, my students actually have to look up which teratogen will affect the development of the zygote embryo fetus at what time period. So, you know, if you drink alcohol, just a drink and say the, the first three weeks of your pregnancy, just one glass, you were at a wedding and they gave you a glass of champagne and you didn't know you were pregnant. So you take a sip of alcohol. Chances are that's not going to affect the development of that, that, you know, embryo fetus. But if you're drinking throughout your pregnancy and you're drinking large quantities, that definitely is going to have some effect in some way on the development of that baby. And then there are some things we call maternal stresses. And what a maternal stressor is, anything that can affect the mother. 
So if the mom has a difficult pregnancy where she has to be a homebound and in bed for the rest of our pregnancy, that can cause a lot of stress. Uh, maybe she's a single mom and she has to try to figure out how am I going to be able to do this? How am I going to be able to afford this? Uh, who am I going to get to watch my child till I go back to work? If my child goes in daycare, that's more money that I have to make because it's quite expensive to go to daycare, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. These are examples of maternal stresses. Now, when we talk about babies at birth, they are quite adept at birth. It's not like the the one theory of, oh, uh, they're like a clean slate and everything has to be built. They know nothing. Now, actually, we are born very, very remarkably well with certain reflexes to protect us at birth that will, in most cases, disappear in a few months. But at that point, we are at the ability that we can learn it on our own. So the first one is the withdraw reflex. And that means when the baby pulls away, when it's overstimulated. So let me see if I can make this just a little bit bigger so you can see me because I'm going to do some actions here. Okay, so the withdrawal reflex, so baby's engaging with someone and ha, goo, goo, ga, 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 and having, a, you know, an interaction with another person. But they may get overstimulated. So what they do, and babies tend to do this often, is they turn away. And a lot of times they actually look at their hands. For some reason, looking at their hands is kind of self-soothing. And then when they're calmed down, they re-engage with mom or dad or whoever they're, they're you know, interacting with. And if it gets too stressful, again, too much stimuli coming in, it's hard for a little baby to process, they once again disengage. That is called the withdrawal reflex. The stepping reflex. <laughs> Babies are not walking at two months. No, they're just not. They don't have the muscle c c control to do it they're showing the stepping reflex. So if your whole baby up and his legs start to go a little, our legs start to move a little, it's, it's not that they're walking. You're seeing the stepping reflex that will help them eventually get to the, the point where they can walk. The sucking reflex, these are all things that, you know, are important for um, the baby to be able to nurse, it needs to know how to, to suckle. But we lose that. And then, you know, when you're a toddler and your parent gives you a sippy cup or they give you a straw and you have to first learn how to use a straw. Now, we, we take that for granted, right? Because we've been using straws forever. What if somebody gave you a really, 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 really long straw and you're trying to use it to drink your drink? You have to learn how much effort and how to angle it to get that fluid up the straw so you get your drink. So we continue to learn, but the initial three months, the baby is able to suckle so it can receive nurse from, from mom's breast for nurse feeding or breastfeeding. The rooting reflex, usually if you take two fingers, and wrap it against the baby's cheek. So whatever side you put the two fingers on, the baby turns that way. It helps with nursing that the baby will turn their head uh, towards mom's breast. The Palmer grass. So this is the first gross motor skill. So the baby is reaching with their full palms. So that's how it's easy to remember the Palmer grass. The pincher grasp comes a little later. That's a fine motor skill. So it's when they use three fingers, it's like claw, the claw, right? So they can pick up much more minute things uh, versus, you know, just grabbing something 
like this with the, uh, a, a pen, being able to pick up just a little piece of paper, that, that's a little harder to, to do if you're just using the Palmer grasp. The startle reflex. Now this is gonna sound really bad, but I don't mean it this way, so listen first before you. If you throw your baby up in the air, I'm not talking, woo! No, I'm talking, you know how you may have seen parents bounce their baby, you just kind of give them a little bit of air time and they usually laugh and, right? So if you throw your baby up in the air, you will see the startle reflex. And what happens is the baby brings its head and arms out and then immediately pulls in kind of like this. And, and what's happening is it's protecting all the vital organs, except this is a reflex. The, the child doesn't know what's doing it. It just automatically happens. So if the baby falls, if some reason the person who was doing the startle uh, didn't catch them, all of the major organs are protected as best they can be so they wouldn't be harmed or it would be minimal damage. What's unique about this is if you ever choose to go sky skydiving in your life, the first thing they do is teach you how to land. And guess what? It's the startle reflex that we were born with and just went away. And now it's back because you had to learn it again. It was just a reflex when you had it before. Okay, the swimming reflex. Again, baby is not swimming. If you put the baby in the water and it kicks the arms and legs, your baby's not swimming. You let go of your baby, they sink to the bottom, gasping through a lot of air before they float back to the top, right? They're not swimming, it's a reflex. Tonic neck has to do with the ability to hold up their, their head. Originally, they're able to keep it stable, but remember, this is all cartilage. It's not bone yet. So it's not unusual to see the baby have to be propped up. And plantar and, and Babinski both have to do uh, with the feet. Um, plantar, I believe, is when you rub your fingers down the uh, baby's bottom and they uh, kind of... the big toe kind of moves and it kind of uh, turns in and Babinski is the same motion you rub down except the toes separate they fan out like this uh, this is used a lot to make sure there are no neurological problems it's one of the things that's checked uh, in early development of the of the child and later on also to make sure development's going the way it's supposed to. And the last one then is eye blink. So if something is coming at you, you know, you blink. If you know it's coming, you can force yourself to get beyond that reflex. But the nice thing about the eye reflex is it's with you for life. It never goes away. Okay, so that's our class for today, since some people were watching this by video and some people um, are watching it um, after the fact of your, your test and some in class. So uh, if you have any questions, I will see you on Friday uh, for class. Uh, you can always email me with any questions and I'm gonna stop my share. And I'm going to stop the recording and have a good day.